What's up everybody, Chris from South Carolina Gun School, sitting here with Jason Crotto from WildTac. Uh, he was one of the great instructors out at Train and Learn here 2023. Uh, phenomenal event, phenomenal instructor. You taught me some really awesome things. And again, that was why I was, I, like we talked about before, I was glad to come out and do some work with you because it kind of validated some of the things that I do, especially with the cover. I remember you talked about you wanted to focus on cover because that is one thing that people tend to use incorrectly. Well, they, they tend to use it incorrectly, and, and we, we talked about cover. We also talked about transitions, especially a uh, strong side to support side. Those are things that people don't practice because they're hard and it sucks. Right. Uh, and that's why I wanted to push it when, when Kevin Dixie asked me to become an instructor for this. He, he said, you know, we've been kind of doing the same things, the fundamental stuff, the beginner type stuff for, you know, all of the events that we've had. He said, I want you to change it up. Right. And so I brought this to the table because I knew it was challenging. I knew it was more of a, it was more manipulation than it was shooting. I, I, I think your guys, is, most, most of the groups that came through shot a magazine, maybe a little bit more. I think 45 rounds was kind of the top. Right. Um, it wasn't so much about the shooting, it was about rifle manipulation, it was about positional shooting, it was about getting into those positions, moving, transitioning, it was more about that. So it wasn't about the expenditure of ammo with the training as it was with actually doing the dynamic movements that we were doing. Um, and, I'm, and I'm glad I was able to validate what you're teaching because we're not reinventing the wheel here. Right. We, we, we've, we know what works and we need to diversify that information as much as possible. Exactly, and that's one thing that, when I first learned shoulder to shoulder transition, because coming from the military, that's not something that they teach. You, you, where's your dominant shoulder? All right, stick the rifle there, shoot it. Right. And when I first learned it, I'm like, what do you want me to do? What, with what? Mm -hmm. And I was like, you, there's, there's no way. And, and I stood, literally, st after that class, I stood there in my house and was just, just worked it and worked it. And I was like, I've got to implement something like this. And it's funny because when I get to that section of the class where we start, where I tell them we're going to work transitions, and everybody's just thinking rifle to pistol. Right. Do you hear transitions with a rifle, you think rifle to pistol. I'm like, no, we're going shoulder to shoulder. Right. And once I actually show them why we're doing it, if I'm on the left side of this wall here and I'm in my right shoulder, I've got to expose so much of my body to be able to get that rifle out there. Right, and you're, and you're exactly right. Life is not NASCAR. There's actually right corners in life. <laughs> right. So we've got to be able to transition and use that left side. Now, one of, one of the things, um, and, and I'll, I'll throw out his name here, Kyle Lamb taught me this. We don't have a weak side. Uh, we've got to be able to use both sides effectively. And, and the only way to do that is to train it and practice it. And when you said that, I was that really hit with me because I tell them we're going strong side to weak side, but I need now when you said that I'm like I need to stop saying that. Right. Because you're right. We don't have a weak side because it's all depending on the situation. And you and I know everybody calls it different. You were to, kind of showing us how to do a full transition from the right shoulder to the left shoulder. I even kind of show what I call a half transition where you just transition it over and you're still able to manipulate the gun and shoot and everything. Because what I started finding is some people struggle going all the way over. Mm -hmm. And I found that a lot of people were able to handle it with just that half transition. Because I didn't want to be the instructor that goes, this is how you have to do it. This is how you have to right. do it. I want to show you the different ways you can do it. You need to find what works for you. But I also tell them too is if I see you only doing it one way, I'm going to make you do it the other way. Well, and I, I have a little bit different approach. So, okay, there may be 10 different ways to do something. I'm going to look at those 10 different ways and I'm going to say, okay, what is the best? And that's what I'm going to teach. And I'm not going to burden my students with the other nine different ways. I'm going to teach them the best way that I know how to get this job done. So. Right, the most efficient, the most consistent, and the one that's going to make them the better shooter. Exactly. And this is why I tell everybody out there, this is why you need to go and experience other instructors. That don't limit yourself to one instructor. Experience other instructors because 
but he might show it in a totally different way. He's probably going to might sh or probably going to show you the same exact thing I'm showing you, but he's going to be able to explain it differently that you might understand a little better than when I explained it. Right. And that's why I like to go and experience different instructors, just like this event here. That's what I love about this event is we get to experience so many different instructors. Year over year, it's always a different instructor because you see a lot of these events and it's the same content, the same instructors. Like he told you when he when he contacted you, hey, we want to do something different. Right. And that's that's exactly why I love this event. Now I'm a little curious, and I always am curious, what got you into this industry? So I I, I worked as a private security contractor for about six years. Um, I, I got out of it, I kind of floated around, I was doing some other things, and I, I got the opportunity to go and train with uh, the Kyle Lamb, uh, Viking Tactics. Right, right, um, yep. it, it was an event put together by Michael Bain, and I got to go down to gun site, spend a couple of days with Kyle, training with him on the range, and it, and it sparked that thing in me where it was like, okay, this is what I want to do with my life. And I spent, uh, that was... Uh, end of the year 2013, I spent the next decade building my company, building my brand, uh, building myself as a shooter, as an instructor, taking classes, going to instructor development courses, becoming the best that I could possibly be, bringing the absolute cutting edge to my students. And um, as of January 1 of this year, 2023, I was actually made, able to transition this to my full-time career. Awesome. Awesome. And that was... To me, it was a really great thing to be able to do that when I was finally able to do that because, you know, the old saying, when you do something you love, you never work a day in your life. Right. And that Funny was, thing is you end up working every day. <laughs> right, <laughs> right, right. But it, it, it doesn't, to me, it doesn't feel like work. No, no. It does, I don't wake up going, oh, God, i got to go to work today. I wake up going, hey, I'm going to go teach people how to be able to defend themselves that's and protect right. their family. That's right. And that's what I think is so great about this. Um, I know we did rifle with you. Mm -hmm. um, you also teach pistol as well. I do. I, I do. I do defensive pistol. I do defensive carbine. I do a hybrid class that includes both pistol and the rifle. Um, I do long range, uh, long range precision shooting out to you know a thousand yards and beyond. Um, I do a lot of hybrid classes in between uh, that cover multiple platforms. One of the thing, one of the big things that I do in a lot of my classes, I try and maintain consistency. One of the things that we talked about in in the class uh, that we did here, and and I, I don't know if I did it for for every group that came through, but one of the things I talk about, so particularly with like the AR platform, I talk about when you're doing your reloads, when you're doing your mag changes and stuff run that charging handle. The reason I do that is because, think about the way we reload our pistol, okay? We, we slam that mag into the mag well, we come up over the top and we rack that slide, right? As well, by running the charging handle, we are initiating essentially the same motion. By consistency of motion, we can limit the number of repetitions it takes us to master that skill. Um, now, Depending on your application, if you're a competition shooter, that may not necessarily work for you. But we were talking about a lot of the stuff that we were doing in a defensive context. Right. So we want to use grosser motor movements as much as we possibly can. We want consistency of movement. And if we can do that across platforms, all the better. And it, it's, I'm glad you brought that up because I was actually going to talk about that. Because when you said that, I'm over here thinking... Hmm. Cause and because I've had people come in doing that, and I'm like, no, just use your release, use your release. But once you correlated it back to how we run the pistol, I was like, mm, maybe I need to just stop telling them not to do it. And and I'm not saying that it, I'm not saying that running that bolt release is wrong. Right. Right. But you know, it, it it's all about context. I teach it the way I teach it because in in contextual to defensive shooting. It's consistent, and that's where we want to be. We want to be as consistent as possible. We want to be as efficient as possible. Exactly. Now, yes, if you look at it from an AR standpoint, running that bolt release is less consistent 
and less efficient than running the bolt, the, the, the charging handle. But if we look at it from a consistency standpoint, from the way we rack our pistol to the way we rack our rifle, it's more consistent, which means it takes us less repetitions to master the skill. That, it, yes, that, that was, you're right. It's, it, and that's something, because I, thinking about it, that's something I'm always saying in my classes, it's consistency. Consistency, consistency. I'm like, there's nothing fancy about doing this. Yeah, you see the people that are putting stuff on YouTube, Instagram, making it look good for social media, but I'm like, that doesn't make, some of that stuff doesn't necessarily make you a better shooter. It looks good for social media, looks good to get the followers, get people checking the things out, but it's, it's consistently standing there doing the fundamentals and also adding in some movement and stuff as well too. Because that's what I really enjoy when I get to where I start teaching the movement is now where you're learning to move and shoot and we'll transition from shoulder to shoulder and transition to rifling. You kind of start seeing that get a little bit of a low overload. People start having brain farts. Right. And I also try to tell them, like, look, if you think I haven't gone into a class and had a brain fart and messed up somewhere, I'm like, you're wrong. That's why we do this. So that's the other thing. If you listen to what he talked about when he said what got him into it, if you're looking to be an instructor or you're an instructor looking to grow and get better, don't just stop at this certification or that certification. You've got to go out and invest in yourself events like this. So this being, I know for me, this is, I've been here since the beginning. I've been at every single event. I will continue to be at this event. I also like to see other people's perspective. I know you weren't necessarily an attendee, but what do you think about events like this or this particular event here? So this particular event, um, I think as far as, <coughs> Especially with the with the small community that we were able to bring together, um, this is going to build brands. It's going to build businesses, and it makes connections that we wouldn't otherwise be able to make, because it puts people together in a situation where they're able to socialize. They're able to to make that business development. Um, I, I I bet I made 50 contacts this weekend that I wouldn't have otherwise made in in, in the professional world without this event. So for me, for my business development and pushing my brand further out and being able to leverage other people's platforms and other people's students and other people's followers on social media, I would not have had that opportunity without this event. So I got to thank Kevin Dixie for putting this together. Uh, I got to thank you guys for all attending. And I tell you, and, and I, I have to say that I'm absolutely honored to have been asked to teach at this event because not only am I teaching my peers, which is one of the most difficult things you'll ever do as an instructor. Yes, yes. But so I, I got to be put in front of 60 different businesses that are in this industry that are going to push what I did because I came out here scared to death and was able to perform to a, to a level that you guys were able to appreciate. And you'll have to forgive me, you were actually at 2021 as an attendee, correct? Yes. That's because right, that's where we first met. Yes. So I forgive me for that. So you've kind of, you've actually got to experience both sides of it. I have. Being the attendee and being the instructor. So that's you know, that's really phenomenal right there. To be an attendee, then be an instructor and to see both sides of it. And the, again, the training was phenomenal. Um, I'm still, I'm still, I'm, I'm taking, I'm taking bro back I, I pro, know, man. man. <laughs> I, you know that was coming up. You, know you knew up. that was coming up. I'm taking bro back pro, and that was, but I've, what was great about that is I've never looked at it that way. Right. I've never looked at it that way, because I've always kind of taught in a, kind of a supine position with your feet on the tire, where you're able to move. Sure. side to side but this was a totally different aspect of it because like you said if if I'm in a parking lot or there's depending on where I'm at if the cover is very close together I might not be able to get in that prone position sure and this was able to do it and I'll be honest that's something because I'm not gonna lie I struggled with it I struggled with it because it was different and it's 
out of my comfort zone, something I've never done before. So I'm already, as soon as I got done, I'm standing back there like, oh, when I get back, I'm getting my walls out. <laughs> I'm going to be pro back prone and all over the place. I was like, I'm going to make sure I can get good at this before I go out there and be like, all right, we're going to do pro back prone. And, and I think it's funny that, 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 that it seems like everybody I've talked to, that's what they walk away from. The guy from Wyoming <laughs> shows up here in the middle of Minnesota, or in in, in, in into, where the hell are we? Missouri. Missouri. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, it's been that kind of weekend. But I show up here in the middle of Missouri, the guy from Wyoming, and what do I teach? Broke back prone. Okay. <laughs> so that's what everybody walks away with. But but let me let me say this, and I'll go back to you were talking about people that want to be instructors. Um, think about this, and and as long as you've been an instructor, and as long as I've been an instructor, um, and and I'm going to kind of parrot Rob Pincus right here. Uh, and because it was something that he said that was very, very profound for me. Profound to me. Um, if you, when you, when you go and you vet your instructor and you talk to your instructor, I mean, we're not reinventing the wheel here, right? But ask your instructor, what have you changed your mind about? Because I look at the last decade that I've been an instructor, and. I can, I can sit there and off the top of my head, I can think of five things that are like, well, yeah, I've changed my mind about this. This is what I used to think. This is what I think now. And here's why. And if you, if you walk into a class and a student asks you, you know, hey, what have you changed your mind about over the years of everything you've seen? And you get an instructor that goes, what are you talking about? I've been teaching this for 20 years. That's a freaking clue right there. Okay, that's somebody who's not willing to evolve not willing to keep up with, with new trends and newer techniques that are coming out that are better and, and better serve your students. And as an instructor, I think one of the most important things you can do is go to events like this, go to other courses, and keep learning from other instructors, even if it's just a better way to communicate. Right, because this is... In an, an industry that is always evolving. It is. It's always evolving, and just the little bit that I've been in it, I've seen how much it has evolved since I first started in it, and that is exactly it, and that's what I tell everybody is, I, if you, when you're looking at an instructor, don't just look at their certifications. Right. Look and see if they're actually taking training and investing in themselves so they can better provide you with better training. So, and the last thing I want to ask you is, what does WyoTech stand for? So, WyoTech stands for Wyoming Tactical. That's um, what I was thinking, yes. but I don't want to take it. Very, a very unoriginal, and I will tell you, about three miles from my house, there is actually, a, a, it, it's, a, it's a dirt road, and if you look at the street sign, it says, dirt road. We are very unoriginal people. <laughs> <laughs> but we, we, we train good students. Um, the students that come to our class, they come back and they bring their friends because we get them on the range, we give them a quality experience. When we get down on the range, typically we'll bring them back, we will you know, feed them dinner, have a few drinks. We make them family um, because we want our students to know that we stand behind them. And I think that's a very important thing as an instructor. And here's the gravity of being an instructor, guys, okay? especially when you're teaching defensive firearms, you have to understand that there may come a point where one of your students gets into that defensive encounter and now you're called to the stand up for the defense. And are you willing to stand up there and tell a judge and tell a jury that yes, I've seen this person on the range. They demonstrated safety, they demonstrated confidence, they demonstrated competence. and. Whatever decision they made, they made from this training, and I will guarantee you it was the right decision. And I like the way you talk about, because I know we were talking about it earlier, that separation. And it was, it, I thought it was great that you brought that up, because I, when I went and got my instructor certification, the instructor was like, you don't need to shoot with your shooting students. I was like, why? And they're like, well, they don't need to, it pretty much it was almost a roundabout <laughs> way to say they don't need to see how bad you shoot. And I'm like, well, one, you shouldn't be shooting bad, but two, everybody has off days. Right. And I've had students come in that have shot better than me. 
and that doesn't make me any less of an instructor. Uh, it, it, it happens. I, I have no problem shooting with my students, and I enjoy hanging out with my students afterwards and talking and stuff like that. Because sometimes I'm like, hey, we'll go back up to the classroom, sit, hang out, but then we end up just sitting there on the range and chilling out there and just and talking and having a conversation and letting them see that, that you're a person outside of being a firearms instructor. And, and, and it's funny you bring that up. And, and if, if you don't mind, I'm going to throw out a plug throw. for my podcast. I, I, I do a podcast with my co-host, my, my wife, and one of my best friends, Jason Wilson. He's the CEO of Lucid Optics. Um, you can find us on Podbean. It's called Deer Shooter, D-E-A-R. We are writing you a letter. Um, and it's, it's one of the topics that we discussed. And what you're getting at is, like, we want our students to feel like family. And, and when we, we kind of approach this topic, and the thing about it is, being an instructor, you know, you've, you've got to be able to perform in class. Because you've got to be able to show your students, this is why you're learning from me. Okay, but at the end of the day, it's not about how well I shoot. It's, are you a better shooter at the end of my class than you were when you walked into it? Um, there, there has been, over the last several years, kind of an ongoing debate online between some of the larger instructors, the bigger guys in the industry, of, you know, there's either the, you demo everything, or you don't ever shoot. And... I, I don't really fall into either one of those categories. I'm kind of somewhere in the middle. I say demo what you need to when your exactly. students yes. when your students need need to see it. Right. Okay. That's that's part of the dynamics of being an instructor is knowing. Okay, I've got a student that's a visual learner, so they've got to see it done. But here's the key. So number one, when I when I demo something. I usually, I typically don't shoot at a target. I'll shoot between targets. The reason is, is because I don't want them worrying about what's going on down range. I want them watching what's going on here. The other, th the other reason for that is I don't, you know, if I if I do totally screw it up, okay, I don't want them. I don't want the students going. Well, why am I training with this bird? Or if I totally rock it, I don't want my students being intimidated. But what I want my students to see is what's going on right here. Right. Exactly. And I, that's kind of two things on that. It's, I remember something Kevin said, first train and learn. Not every good instructor is a good shooter. Not every good shooter is a good instructor. Well, they're two, they're two different skill sets. And, and I'll add one more thing to that is anytime you demo anything on the range, always use a student's firearm. Mmm. Mm. Now, that's good. That's good. I've never thought about doing that because I've always been, had my rifle slung or my pistol on and using my stuff. And wow, that's yeah. I'm, 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 I'm gonna have to remember that one. Mo that's, most of the time in classes, I don't. I I might have my concealed carry on, but I'm not like I'm not really carrying anything else. Um, if I have to demo something, is it, can I borrow your rifle? Can I borrow your pistol? And I will demo it with the student's gun. This does two things. This, number one, reinforces the training and takes away the excuse of, well, you have, you know, Gucci gear. Right. You got... No, I'm using yours, dude. Right. You got Daniel Defense, you know, you Spikes Tactical. We see right. you go on and on about those top-level firearms and stuff. Or, I got the Staccato, you know, so no, that's... Man. Yeah, you, man, you got me thinking on that one. <laughs> I, that's, that's deep right there, man. I, 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 that's a... Hey... Look, this is the kind of thing that goes on at Train and Learn. Not just learning on the range, learning in the interview, or the after hour stuff. That I, 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 there might be a little bit of this. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And I, I tell, I tell, I tell, like we were talking out there, Katie looked at me and I was like, you know, I was like, you need to have Train and Learn and then Train and Learn after hours. Right. And that's just like we're sitting out there with Amari and, and all the information that he was providing and stuff. It's just, it's absolutely amazing. This, if you're in this industry, I don't care what it is, influencer, YouTuber, advocate, manufacturer, instructor, whatever, this right here is the event that you need to be at because you're able to get 
in front of great instructors like this and be able to interact and stuff like that. You know, I would say I would love to have you out at my place to teach, but I don't have the distance like you do, man. Oh, I, you, I, you know I, what? We, we don't have to have the distance. We can do all kinds of things. Um, I, I actually did an event of, about a month ago in Texas where we, we were at a facility and I think our max range was like 250 yards. That's about so, right, right around. That's so the instead of using like our long range rifles and stuff, you know, we, we, do, we do a lot of long range stuff. Where I'm at, we can shoot out to like 3,000 yards. It's crazy. But we didn't have that opportunity there. So what we did was we partnered with Air Force Air Guns. And we did the whole thing with 25 caliber air guns, where 250 yards is the equivalent of making that, you know, mile long shot with your 300 Win Mag, right? Mm. But we were doing it with air guns, and instead of I have a four foot by four foot steel target out there in the middle of nowhere, no, I had an egg on a stick. Wow. No, okay, so that's pretty cool. So. Yeah, we, we, we're going to be talking in the future, man, definitely. Uh, I appreciate you taking the time to sit down with me. Again, I appreciate you coming out, all the knowledge that you were able to throw at us and everything. And that's another hard thing is, is you get an hour and a half block and it's like, what do I do? But the cover and the transitions, I think that was spot on with that because that's one thing I've noticed also when I've gone to other schools is some people don't teach I think the cover is taught in a good way, but the tra the transitions, a lot of people forget to do that. So that was spot on with everything. Um, so how can everybody find you? I know we've, you've got, is it, it's at Wild Attack on Instagram. I, at Wild Attack on Instagram, on Facebook, it's Wyoming Tactical. Um, the website is www.wyattack.com. Again, we've got on Podbeam, we've got Deer Shooter, and that's D E A R because I think there is a D E E R. D E R. Yes. Yeah, you, yeah, you're right. Um, but yeah, I mean, look for us there. You can, you know, you can you can reach me through both WyoTac. If you also, I, I Lucid Optics is a sponsor and a partner of mine. You can reach me through them if you absolutely can't find me any other way. But uh, yeah, I'm 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 totally reachable. And you need to check out Lucid too. They've got some really good stuff. Uh, I'm not. I, we could probably sit here for hours and talk yeah, about. Yeah, you don't get the, me going uh, on the, the optics. <laughs> and, and it when it's not a true red dot, it is a blue dot. Um, that's something you. I'm not, I'm not gonna uh, waste your time. And if, you, if you if you want to get into it, we can go into it. I, 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 we, we'll end up here for hours and hours and hours. And I know we we both got long rides to get out of here and get home and stuff. So I appreciate it. Check out check him out. I'll have all of his information down in the description. So that will be there if in case you missed anything. I'm definitely going to go in and check out the podcast. I didn't realize that you had the podcast, so that's one thing I'm going to add in and check out your podcast. It, it is new. We we actually we launched it at Shot Show. Awesome. Um, I think uh, I don't even know what today is. Uh, Sunday. Yep. So um, we we drop every day midnight on Thursdays. Okay. So every, you know every Thursday morning on your commute, that's when you can listen to us. Um, I, I I think the, the the one that dropped just this last Thursday was about the women's uh, class that we did uh, a week ago. So we had a couple of guest instructors on there. We had Caitlin Wheeler. We had Jean Weir. Um, those are two very very interesting people. Caitlin is a three gun competitor. She just graduated high school, so she has moved out of the junior division into the adult division. Um, I'm in the middle of helping fast track her into a instructor certification. Awesome. Um, we had Jean Weir who was a coach for the U.S. Olympic shotgun team. Oh, so cool there, very, very interesting people. It was uh, a very great discussion. I think the week before that we were talking with 10th Mountain Whiskey out of Vail. So, um, yeah, I might it, go back and check, check we, those out. We, we, get, we get into some pretty interesting discussions, but yeah, you can check us out there and, uh, you know, like I said, uh, www.wyotac.com, uh, at Wyotac on Instagram, Wyoming Tactical Facebook. 
we're we're pretty easy to reach, and we we try to respond as quickly as possible. Awesome, awesome. Thank you very much for Thank taking you time. very much. Always remember, folks, if you're not shooting, you're reloading. If you're not reloading, you're fighting. If you're not fighting, you're dead. Trained to live. And the angry bumblebee has got the overwatch. There you go. There you go. <laughs>